Okay, right then, we're nearly down to business. Let's look at this Italian team. Giovanni Ranieri makes seven changes to his squad in the Fords, the regular captain, Elisa Giordano. She's out with a calf injury, so it's Milan's Giulia Cavini who starts. Meanwhile, Ealing Saraseye gets a nod at tight head. Into the backs where Sofia Stefan, she skippers from nine and links up once again with the Grenoble fly half, Veronica Medea. Much of that back line ballast and excitement, of course, will come from that centre partnership of Regoni and Sillery. Moving into England, where John Mitchell appears to be keen to give game time to those who haven't had so many minutes under their belts. In the forwards, we get to see Zoe Allcroft, who's been out for a large portion of the season with a knee injury. She returns to partner Abby Ward in the second row. And, of course, Marley Packer wears seven for her 100 cap. Moving into the backs, 9, 10, 12, Lucy Packer, Zoe Harris and Emily Scarrett all miss WXV injured. Plenty of focus on Scarrett in the 12 shirt today, having spent the majority of her career wearing 13. Now, on the benches, do keep a very close eye on what Italy have been up to. They've gone for a 6-2 forwards back split, whilst for England, Exeter Chiefs back rower Maddie Fernati, she could make her debut. The stunning Italian skyline, almost perfectly blue with just those fluffy white clouds in the distance. As both sides get ready to get underway. Plenty of patience as both sides just wait to be given the signals. Our referee today is Aurélie Grosilou of France. And Katie, That's we had two great time, uh, great games yesterday and hopes are that this test can ultimately live up to the excitement. Yeah, we really did, especially that final test was uh, Scotland-Wales was a very, very good game, wasn't it? And I think today, you know, this will be very different. It'll be interesting to see how this England, England side go. But for me, I think Italy have got a lot of promise, a lot of potential. Oh, and hopefully, seven, yes, England, seven. we think, will be the top side of this table. See how they get to go against these guys today. Right, we're about to get underway in Parma. Italy against England in the 2024 Guinness Women's Six Nations is underway. The final game of round one. Italy with the ball, deep inside of their 22 for now, but that looks like turnover ball for England. Atkin Davis there with the distribution. Now Scarrett, alternative scrum halves all over the place for England early days. Packer. Remember, there's two Packers on the field. Lucy Packer, the scrum half, and Marley Packer, the captain. So you will hear that name a lot. Distribution from Harrison, pushed out towards the near side wing. Breach tries to go for the fend. And eventually the ball lands in touch for the Roses. So we get to see an Italian line out. It's a good start from England, though, isn't it? You know, kicking long into the corners, force some pressure. See here, we know that England want to exploit that wide space and from Jess Breach will probably be a little bit disappointed in this instance, getting bundled into touch, you know, tries to stay strong, but that's going to be a big, big responsibility for England's wingers today. Stay away from that touchline, recycle the ball, allow England to play. Harlequin's hooker, Sylvia Tirani, gets the message. Cleanly taken in the air there by Federighi. Ball is cleared down the near side. Not cleanly taken by Breach, and that's a bobbling ball, well batted back by the Azure. Lovely pass, that's what Rigoni does. As long as someone knows it's coming. Stefan spun out, Madeir there with the extra pass, then pushing out towards the edges of the field. Rigoni there was chasing back in a yellow scrum cap. But uh, as we often say, early days here in this Six Nations game, a little bit scrappy, Katie Daly would be. It is, but I think what I'm enjoying is both sides have come to play, you know. We've seen both attacks with the ball getting into the 15-metre channel. This time, Sarja Kabea gets in between. Winger does a good job of trying to stay off the touchline. But like we say, uh, Rigoni, great pass across the middle, moving the ball, stretching the game. And, and that's for us, especially for me as a fly half, is what I would like to see. Well, chance to see a scrum then for these two sides. Won't come as much as a surprise that England had one of the best scrums in the Six Nations last year. And there you go, what a shove. Italy have done so well to get rid of that. Medea, Dinka coming off a wing. Now Sillery. Oh, it's Estuni Minuzzi who went through the guts there, making a way from fullback. Stefan there. 
Early penalty here and a warning against England. Yeah, again, it's all right from Italy, you know, like you say, England had, I think, had the most dominant scrum in the 2023 Six Nations. They gave the fewest amount of penalties, so for Italy to get that ball away, get it played, that's what they'll have to do. They can't go, for me, muscle with muscle because they will lose that battle. But if you can get that ball, you can get it in and then you can get playing to good use of your set piece. And this is where the penalty was given away. Yeah, you can just see there, can't you? Marley Packer's hands straight on the floor. She's got to be showing that she's holding her weight. She can go for the ball, but those hands can't touch the floor. Best position that Italy have had so far then in the fixture. Slight overthrow there in the end by Tirani, but nice that they've managed to hold it at the back. And it's been knocked on the floor there by Sayek. Frustration there for Italy from what was a, a very golden opportunity and there will be some concerns after that dominant English scrum that we saw. We're about to see that all over again. We are and these are the moments that are going to be huge from Italy. You know, we're just seeing here the knock on. I think there's hands in there as well. Is that Abby Ward in the middle of that? So I think that's probably a bit unlucky because actually that's probably a turnover from. But ultimately, Italy are going to have to look after the ball. If they go into contact against England, they're going to have to be really clean, get the ball nice and far back. Well, Italy are holding that slightly better, but England want more. They're looking for the penalty. They're going to hold that winning great ball control. Oh, just lost at the back there by Beckett, but the penalty had already been given. Stand up, Luke. We can see that this is going to be a tactic from England, so this is a warning shot early on here for Italy. It is, and it's really tough, isn't it? If your scrum struggles on your own ball, it's even harder when you're in defence. And like we say, England, they're very, very sensible. Beckett, good control at the back, yeah. keeps the ball in, waits for referees. Lucy Packer will be talking to her all the time. That arm goes out just at the crucial moment. And that was a tricky line-out for England, and Italy managed to steal it through Tirani. Stefan, Nadir, Rigoni. Sillery, Ostuni Manuzzi. Big tackles raining out on that far side wing, coming in by Dow, who's still scrapping away out there, and she's won the penalty. Because uh, Italy feet, have nine. gone off their feet, and England will clear. For me, really nice play by Italy. Again, moving the ball, want to get those wide channels. What they're going to have to be very, very careful about is that breakdown on the edge. Abby Dow is very, very strong, very physical, wants to get back on her feet and cause bother it there. And if you just watch it here, good tackle on her feet. Look how quickly she's back. And her two England players, one Italian, they're going to have to send more numbers to that breakdown if they want to exploit those wide channels. Ball in by Atkin Davis. It's another overthrow. Now, this will be a concern early on here from England. Scarrett has done well to tidy it, but it's just been a knock on at the back there by Packer. Puts her arm up straight away. And uh, the line out has been so strong for so long for England. There's no Amy Cocaine today. She's uh, picked up at a bit of a knock. There's no May Campbell at the moment. So, a lot of pressure on the shoulders at the moment of uh, Atkin Davis. And we're only six minutes in. Yeah, I think there's a bit of pressure from Italy, but the girls will be disappointed, you know, especially the likes of Abby Ward and there, Zoe Olcroft, Lark, Akin Davies pride themselves on this area of their game. They will have done a lot of work. So there'll be a couple of small conversations going on there just to address what it is, a couple of overthrow, whether it's lift, jumper, um, but I don't think this will be a theme we'll see of England's game. Well, Italy's reward is a scrum, and they managed to get that one out quickly. Rigoni, right down the guts of the park, kill done waiting. Nice footwork, support on the shoulder by Scarrett. Breach. Packer, Harrison. Linking up nicely, phases being worked through. Scarrett again. Cabea, who is hanging out there on that far side wing, making good ground, good meters. England said they wanted to play quicker in this Six Nations, and we're seeing the evidence of that. Huge tackle going in there on Beckett. <laughs> Penalty for Italy, great jackal over the top there by Rigoni. And England, as quick as they were, it was Italy who were on it. 
An outstanding tackle by Scorbini, wasn't it? Chop tackle. Sarah Beckett, such a great runner, very, very physical. But great tackle technique, gets her on the ground, and as soon as she's on the ground, it gives the likes of Fragoni the opportunity to get in, get over the ball. Just going to see it again now here, aren't we? Good pass, nice and flat, but yeah. look how low she is. Beckett has no chance to use that footwork. Great, rolls out, nice and clean. It's a great technique from Rigoni there, nice and low. Hands on the ball, England can't move her. And there you go, Beatrice Rigoni there. White, please. Plays a rugby at the moment at Sale in the PWR League. Premiership Women's Rugby. A number of Italians now applying their trade in England as Ferrani gets the ball in. Dots it down. This is strong from Italy, a nice field position for them as well. A little bit tangled there in the midfield, but Cavini there eventually provides support. The offloading is strong. Distribution eventually comes in. A few more forwards arrive to shore things up. Stefan looking for options. They're spinning it towards that far side. Medea there. She's running it very close to that England defensive line. Calling for it is Maurice. Places it backwards. Back Italy can continue almost a steal there in the midfield by Ward, but happy that it's just a knock on and they restart with a scrap. It is scrappy, isn't it, when you're watching this now? But I think for me, both teams have got an intent to want to play. I think it's just that first games of Six Nations testing each other out. We're seeing a lot of pressure from defences trying to get off the line. But for Italy, I think they'll be pleased with that opener. You know, there's some good bits in it, they're sorting their breakdown out. Ragoni looks looks dangerous, ball in hand, she's wanting to move the ball. So it's a good, solid start from this Italian side. We're all eyes there on Abby Ward as she just packs down, of course. Crash! Her first international since the birth of her daughter, Hallie, last year. Nine. Set! And they're trying to drag that one out and move it as quickly as possible. A little bit slow there by Cavini, but eventually they speed it up through the hands. Ostuni Manuzzi tries to get Knock it back inside, but the connection just not quite there. Breach manages to feed to the forwards. Bottman arrives, Packer. Roland hanging out there as first receiver. Scarrett finds kill done. Now out to Dow. Cabea's outside her. Seeing a lot of Cabea hanging out on the right wing. Big hits going in there on Zoe Aldcroft. That flat distribution, but <coughs> I did just feel Italy were reading that well as it goes forward. <coughs> now, of all the players to go down, that's Michaela Sillery, and that will be a concern for the Italians. It will, isn't it? One of their most experienced backs out there. She's good player, isn't she? Good defender. Is here we see it. Whether she's just got that ankle, that foot caught, or holding her knee, or was one of those positions when you get into the jackal, so we hope she will be OK. Yeah, well, Michaela Sillery winning her 83rd yeah. cap today. She's the regular Italian kicker, so there may be a little bit of a, a rearranging, but you have to say, you can see there on your screen, Veronica Madeir. So one thing Italy really do have, and that is a lot of yeah, options of kickers off. in their back line. They do, and some check. really talented kickers so as well, you know, Chris, goal you kickers, a bit of distance. We haven't seen a lot of kicking, which I thought we might have seen more of. Um, but it'll be interesting to see what Italy do about that. OK, we're looking at foul play. The and I think they are looking for a crock roll here. I'm ready. Uh, England number eight is Sarah Beckett. So we will just watch these and listen in to what the officiating team say. Uh, the television match official today is Chris yeah, Asmus of now. Canada. Yeah, so I think uh, Sarah Beckett there. She needs to be supporting her yes, own Chris. body weight and not uh, rolling onto the limb there of Sillery. I see a dangerous clean direct on the leg. OK. Correct, by number eight white. So for me, it's uh, yellow, three sword, and with you. Happy with that? Happy with that. OK, so to so confirm, Sarah eight. Beckett is going to the sin bin, and this is also going to go to a bunker review where they will have eight minutes to decide if that's going to be upgraded to a red card. You have to be Captain. so careful with these kind yeah. of tackles. Jack we Willis in particular from England's men. We have a dangerous by 
He was out of rugby for a long time after a similar tackle. Yes, it's yellow card and yellow review. It's dangerous clinic direct on the leg. And review. Yeah. Okay, right then. So we're just waiting now for uh, them to restart the game as Sarah Beckett goes and takes a very nervous sit down. I mean, it would be desperately disappointing for England, but ultimately this is something World Rugby really wants to tidy up in the game. Yeah, it's hard, isn't it? Because from the position that uh, Solari is in, she's in a very low, she's almost won the ball. For Sarah Beckett, as a tall girl, there's not a lot she can do in that instance, so she's tried to move her and roll her. Like you say, this is all about the protection of players. We're hoping that Italian player is fine, and then we'll see what how Bunker review this. Well, it's taking quite a while for the uh, game to get back underway. We're not quite sure yet also if Michaela Sillery is going to continue or not. You can see just there, there's still treatment going on down on the floor for the time being. So there may just still be a slight pause. Of course, don't forget yesterday in the Six Nations, we started off with a, a convincing win for France. Five tries for them over Ireland. Yep. Yep. 38 points to 17, that one played out in Le Mans. Meanwhile, Wales, it was heartbreak for them. They had a conversion kick right at the death to try and level with Scotland and then try and win it, but it wasn't to be. And Scotland got their first win in Cardiff in 20 years. Now, that's great news, because you can see there, Sillery has had that knee heavily strapped and looks like she's going to play on. Yeah, and it doesn't surprise, you know, having played against this lady, she is. She punches far above her weight, you know, she's a slight figure, but this girl can play, and it's good to see. You never want to see a p uh, player leaving the field for an injury. So England down to 14 women. And they are notoriously slow starters sometimes in the Six Nations, although I have to say, when we last saw this fixture played out last year, England did run out 68 points to five winners against Italy in Northampton. But so far, we're scoreless. Italy holding their own. OK, Not ball coming down there. A little bit of a shuffle from side to side by Stefan, who was trying to exploit the blind side Not there, but she's ended up being on. bundled into touch. There was a knock-on there at the line-out, so we restart with a scrub. They just have to be, these are the moments that are really important for teams like Italy. You, we know England will grow into this game, we know they will get better. But when Italy get opportunities just outside 22s in England's half, they've got to capitalise. So far we've seen you know, the, this possession start in front of us. Italy are in this game, you know, 53% of possession, they've had more than England. But if you're not going to take any points for it, because we know if England get the ball, they can counter attack from anywhere, they've got to be a little bit more protective and a bit more complete more of their opportunities. Well, once again, Italy survive another English scrum. Rigoni there, remember, they've got the extra player on the field for the time being, so England are going to have to work a little bit harder here. But that one's been knocked on by the Italians as they tried to go through their moves. And these are the moments, aren't they? We've seen Italy go to these wide channels for the last 12 minutes. Was probably little success uh, you know it's moved well it's a great read there from Jess Boucher gets high forces pressure but I think Italy maybe just need to change the game a little bit go down the middle run into the likes of Scarrett Zoe um, Zoe Harrison make them tackle you get your forwards around the corner almost build yourself into the game you don't have to score off the first phase a little bit of uh, game management there we can see by Hannah Bottoman who just took her time to kneel down there eat away a, li a little bit of the clock And then, of course, when they're down to 14, they want to conserve as much energy as they can. Crouch! Bind! Set! Well, remember, this is a bigger shove. It's still a penalty to England. They haven't put an extra woman into that scrum either. We were keeping a close eye there. So that might be why all of a sudden it looked like if he had a bit more of a nudge on that. I thought Harrison was giving the ball there to Ward to kick it almost. I think Abby Ward thought about it as well. Well, Harrison sends that one deep into the stands. Harrison, another player who, you know, she spent a long time out injured. She's back playing for Saracens and very well as well. 
No doubt looking to play her way to make that 10 shirt hers once again. You really felt at the World Cup it was her 10 shirt, but she just got an ACL just at the wrong time. Yeah, a very nasty injury. And you know, Zoe has really grown through her England tenure and, and the 45 caps I think she's had. So, But it's a great battle between her and Holly Aitchison. Very different players, but both will do a very good job for England. Now England went for short numbers there in the lineouts. They mixed it up because it hasn't quite been going their way. This is a nice trundle down this near side Get touch. You can just see there Cavani's made her way through that mall. Eventually Packer releases to Scarrett. Bottoman. Packer. Ward. Packer again as they try and spin it out. They're trying to use the wide channels. Oh, what a great tackle coming in there by Ostuni Manuzzi. England locked out of the 22 for now. Oldcroft. Sillery still struggling there for Italy, so it's 14 on 14 while she is down. Big pass out far side. Back inside to Breach. He's trying to break through. Now we get to see Roland. A pass to anyone. No one can take, but the ball has gone into touch. Now, all eyes will be on Michaela Sillery, who had taken a knee there. Yeah. And you are just concerned that maybe yes. she may have to go off now. Yeah. Captain! Captain! There's something being fed yeah. into the referee here. This will be a result of the bunker, so we should listen in now. We have an answer for a review. Yeah. It's a high degree of danger and no mitigation. It's a red card. So Rebecca has been given a red card. England will play out the rest of this fixture in Italy with 14 women on the field. Sarah Beckett sat there, obviously very upset with the decision. But as we said, World Rugby is desperate to make sure that these kind of tackles, which have seen some players ultimately have their careers ended, have to be seen to be stamped out. Yeah, and like like we said, uh, there would be no intent from Sarah Beckett there, you know. She's on. just, the uh, Italian girl is in such a good position there that it's the only way she's tried to move it other than not doing anything. I think, for me, that's when it becomes really tricky as a player. How do we coach to allow her to have a competition over the ball? Red Roses with 14 then and a big job to do well, if they're to try and start their title defence with a win. What a great steal there from England. This is a strong position for them after what would have been a disappointing last minute. Atkin Davis offering herself to drive forward. Packer wants it. Ward popped off there to Marley Packer, the captain. Bottoman goes once again. Italy over the top of that so fast. It's just slowing down anything England are trying to do. Ward, what a stretch and reach! Abby Ward on her return to international rugby goes over with sheer determination for England's first. What a great person to score England's try. You know, this lady come back having a baby. You would never look at her and think, wow. But she is so strong, gets so low. It just doesn't give in, doesn't die. And that, for me, is really important. England have used their forwards a bit more there. And you just see great reach, great ball control. But it's the strength of that core to keep moving, keep her legs pumping to get over the line for England. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Abby Ward. Made her come back for Bristol in Premiership Women's Rugby at the end of last year. And once again, the referee is calling in England for a word here. It's no try because the player, it's a double movement on the field. It's penalty against you on five metres. OK, so the try is chalked off there for England. Double movement by Ward. It's no try, double movement. Is off. We wait. Well, that will be hugely frustration. Let's just watch it one more time. Yeah, I suppose once a knee is on the ground, the tackle's complete, but we're saying double movement. It didn't feel like Abby came to a complete stop there um, for the double movement, but potentially a tackle has been complete. Time is on. Well, Italy survived. 
and England have to think again. Italy only got one win in the 2023 Six Nations, that was over Ireland. And they do tend to start the Six Nations pretty strongly, the Italians. They've run a few sides quite close in early matches. two fifth place finishes in the last couple of years will have disappointed them the carrot of world cup qualification certainly driving on all the sides in 2024 Sugana Sugana stefan comes in and i'm not quite sure that's how she wanted to execute that kick at all offside on 10 meters eight Oh, that's just poor communication and execution by Italy. It is, and it's hard because Stefan's doing the right thing there. You know, you've got to a touch line. You need to get out. You need to exit your 22. I don't think she had enough protection from her forwards there. You know, Zoe Allcroft, I think, is and four there is able to get right over the right foot of Stefan, which makes that box kick so so hard. Uh, and then the referee is communicating to the Italian players. So, just got to listen and work with your referee in those instances. Yeah, Italy need to be seen there as retreating or being put on side as Atkin Davis gets it on this is a better line out shift here from England that one's gone down to the ground referee is playing penalty advantage to England you can just see lying there Sara Tunesi they are not on the field didn't allow England to get that more going and I think they will repeat the trick here now a lot of the build up to this Six Nations Katie is all about England playing quicker so about how they're going to be using the backs um, but here we see what would be described as a more trademark right, right. move here Just from England, reverting to the ball, and with 14 women on the field, you can understand why. Yeah, definitely. Look, they need some points on the board. We're 20 minutes in nearly. They're going to want to score. It's something that they've drilled, well used to using. You know, Italy there, she's tried, Sarah Tanese's tried to sack that. England have formed that well. And you put all money on that. This is going over that Italian try Big line. Big shove from England. Can they get their inches short? Now they're pushed backwards. They're going to have to use this one, England. Not it does eventually right. spill out on the Italian side. Wonderful work by the Italian forwards who've got an advantage as well. They're just trying to get a little bit of field position so they can kick this one away. Good run in by Scorbini. Clearance eventually on, comes on. in by Stefan. It's not found touch, it's found breach. The mistakes are racking up for England and Italy continue to survive. It's really good, strong defensive play from Italy. I think as you watch this more, they do you think England have scored it. Hannah Bottman there, just a bit loose with the ball, not looking after it. And then Italy do a very, very good job of exiting. You know, good box kick. We think we would have gone for distance, but she goes through a bit of competition. Good turnover that we're seeing. And, and that's all Italy can do. Just keep winning those little moments, keep making England play. Keep working your way out of your own half. Oh, lovely moment there between Stefan and Madea, the nine and the ten, knowing that they are still definitely in this fight. Long way to go in this test. Who's going to get the first points? <laughs> so keep an eye as they are packing down. You'll see that because Sarah Beckett has been red carded, England have chosen not to put anyone at the back there of the scrum. They would have the option to put someone in there, but ultimately it would leave a space in the backs if they did. Yeah, and I think because England have been so dominant with how with the scrum that they probably feel at the moment they don't need to. They're matching the weight of the Italians. Crouch. Right then, let's head down to pitch side. Elma Smith, Bye. who's with you? Sarah Hunter, uh, a player down, unfortunately a try disallowed, but not all bad so far? No, you know, they're, they're sticking to the game plan at the minute. We've obviously had to problem solve and work our way through with the, the red card. And, you know, we train for these scenarios. So for the girls to, to fall straight into that plan, you know, it, it's seamless for us. And probably just need to work on that, the final two inches of, of being able to convert some of the opportunities that we've had. I saw Marley speaking to the girls when their decision came through. What is the kind of thing she'd be saying in that moment? Saying nothing changes. You know, like I said, we 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 put scenarios Break in training the for first. players going down and, and knowing what what our place will be, where people will go, and things like that. So it'll be really calm out there because they'll have, they'll know that we'll have rehearsed it and we've got a plan for it. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you. 
Well, Sarah Hunter there speaking to Alma Schmidt, who's pit side for us. Sarah Hunter, of course, former England captain. She's now one of the assistant coaches alongside John Mitchell. As the play just went out on the far side there. Worth mentioning as we see the clock turn over to the 21st minute, Katie, that it was at this time in this fixture in 2023 that England really started to pull away and power through against Italy. You feel with 14 women, they have a huge task ahead of them. They do, but, you know, they're, they're full-time, their fitness, their strength, they've got a good bench to come on. I think, probably like Sarah Hunt has just alluded to, it's not their overall play, it's their last 10, 15-metre approach play where they just need to look after the ball. This Italian side have been defending a lot. You know, the possession start we saw earlier probably has changed. There's less kicking in this game at the moment. So England have had a good amount of territory. They just need to convert. And for me, it's probably just been a bit more respectful of the ball, keeping a hold of it and making sure they convert when they get those opportunities. Well, a little bit of water taken on by Time both on. sides. What's up? Very pleasant spring conditions. You can see plenty in the crowd. Haven't even got jumpers on today. Right then, Atkin Davis goes in, water's there, but not straight. Sofia. It's interesting watching that because having been to Italy as well, potentially a bit of a ball difference. Like Lark Akin Davies is a very, very good throw of the ball. We've seen three or four lineouts that haven't gone to hand, and look, there'll be many a component lift, a jumper. But that one is a throw element, so potentially a different ball, maybe a bit skinnier. The flight isn't going as nice. Time for Silvia Tirani to have a go. There's a hand on that somewhere, but Italy hold on to no it. Hands! Assistant tackler, number three, not release. Well, that's a warning there against Kelsey Clifford. And although Italy perhaps don't quite have as much territory as they would like at the moment, they keep on getting the ball back. Eventually, they may find themselves at the other end of the field. They will, but what this will do will take a toll. Again, good defence from Italy there, getting up in the ball. I think it was their ball in this instance. I think for me, Kelsey Clifford's a bit unlucky there. I think that's a good turnover. But yeah, Italy, when you defend for long, long periods, it really does sap your energy. And for England, they will know that. Well, Tarani there, the uh, Queen's woman, just checking that she has the call right. Not the quickest of line-out moves, but there's a big hand in there from Zoe Aldcroft to say, right, let's get this going again. Lucy Back Packer on, just uh, appealing for a, a little bit of forward effort help. Packer doing exactly what Marley Packer we are used to see doing, powering our way through. Kill done. Footwork coming in by Helena Rowland. She's been playing a bit of fly half at club level, but John Mitchell sees her as a 13. Scarrett, there's Stop our five. traditional 13, wearing 12 today. She hacks that ball straight out of play on the far side. She was trying something, but just too much heat on the ball. Yeah, it wasn't a great strike, that, from Emily Scarrett, but potentially right idea, seeing a bit of space in that backfield. We've just seen England go through their phases again. This kick, a lot of backfield space there, but she's overcooked that by a lot. She'll be disappointed with that. I think for me, England need to tighten their game up a little bit. Let them big carriers, your Hannah Bottmans, your Marley Packers, really put some dints in this Italian side and then go to your edges. Great take in the air there by Locatelli and back down the Italian line, the ball comes. This is a real attack for them. Just tried to force that one to Rigoni, so England get advantage on the ball. Really quick defence coming in there by Tornesi for Italy. Ball just bounced there. Till Dunn was waiting, eventually Mutso. She's actually scored three tries in the last two the tests, Mutso. Not quite at the right end of the field to be Stop, thinking blue, about blue. tries just yet. Bottoman really driving the hard yards. Scarrett, big pass out wide, or oh, the bounce of the ball. Not quite connecting on that left wing to Jess Breach. 
tough watching at times, isn't it? There's moments of brilliance for both sides here. Big carry from Hannah Butterman. We've seen Zoe Harrison jumping into that first receiver. Emily Scarrett out the back. And you can see the idea, you know, she's identified space in those wide channels. But again, just a bit of execution letting them down. Well, Italy have never beaten England in all of their 24 meetings in all competitions. And whilst we haven't seen an attack yet down in the England 22, they certainly have the ball and they certainly have a chance with England down to 14. You want it! Stefan. This time, the forwards and also Dinker, who's chasing, is onside. Kill done. Quinn's full back. Happy to run into the blue shirts. Packer to Harrison. Cabea. Nice stuff by the left for Lightning flanker. Ward, who thought she'd scored a try. Now offering support lines. Bottoman. Nice run by Clifford. And he made her debut in the 2023 Six Nations, Kelsey Clifford. Great take there, out on the far side by Roland. Back inside to Dow. This is nice from England. Packer. One of the best phases that England have put together now. Bottomer. Yeah. So Italy go, on the field. go off their feet. And that was one of the best advances we've seen from the Red Roses. We saw them get into their stride there a bit more, didn't we? Knowing that England want to play some big carries, Sarge to Kabea had a really good carry that started that. And once England are carrying, they look a lot more comfortable. They look like they're falling into the shape that we've heard so much about from John Mitchell. And you see Hannah Bottom in here, she's taken three defenders out of the game. Yeah, Italian is look unlucky there again. That hands that can't go on the floor before they go to the ball. Much, much better from England. OK, a little bit of treatment going on the far side of the field. Uh, that's to Helena Rowland as we just look at that territory there. Italy, they've had plenty of the ball. They've just got it all in the wrong areas as uh, England just keep them pinned well back for the time being. Yeah, I don't think Italy have had an entry into England's 22 as of yet. And like we saw in that, 76 of the possession has gone. And, and this lady's been very bright, you know, lovely little offload there. Um, Marley Packer in the edge channels just hasn't been as free-flowing as we would have liked to have seen and I think the, just prior to this is where we saw uh, Helena Rowland go down and take a little bit of knock. I think Helena Rowland is okay, Guy Maurice is still down on the ground for the time being but 48 tackles made by Italy putting in quite a shift. That's fascinating to me because I think watching, having watched this game, you would have thought that was significantly higher given the, the possession um, and the territory start that we've just seen. For, I would have thought Italy would have made double what England have, have done. So you can never rely on data, can you, to tell you about a game sometimes? OK, well, Aurelie Grosilou just waiting for all the sides to reset themselves. She's a full-time referee now with the FFR. Rosilu. She also trains and develops young female talent to get more officials into the game. Diamond, Diamond. Also one of the most respected female officials on the, line. On the oh, men's and jobs. women's circuit. And after that short break and the uh, little bit of the nightclub music we had as well, we get back underway. Right then, Allcroft tight at the front. Now, can they finally get this more going in the way that only the Red Roses can? So many blue shirts in there to try and stop it. No score yet in Palmer. Is this going to be held? There's the warning. Pack has got to get it out. Scarrett. Really nice taken there by Dow, who's still going. Bottoman, who has done so much hard work today. She's carried and carried. Ward once again, not to be. Advantage offside. Packer couldn't quite take it. Roland manages to gather. She needs to make sure she's not held up over the line. No advantage. They'll come back for the advantage. Offside, 12. 
Great defence by Italy again, isn't it? How many times can we say it today? Like you say, England's driving line of their mall has been so, so dominant, but Italy have obviously gone away, done their homework, and they're stopping it. They're forcing England to move that ball into those channels. Well, if you're just joining us, Sarah Beckett was uh, red carded early on in this fixture, so England are having to play with 14 on the field right now. Italy have managed to fend off everything that the Red Roses have thrown at them. I do just wonder if at some point the dam will burst. The last five games that the Red Roses have actually played against Italy have been won by 50 plus points, but you already have a feeling that's not going to happen today. Crouch! <laughs> you never want to say never, do you? I think, it, you know, Italy have put on a great show in, they've, but Stays! how long you can keep defending like this when England are having multiple entries into your 22? Well, that's a huge shove from England. You've got one less woman there in that pack. Then it's Packer. She looks up. Here comes Harrison. Scarrett having to go and do a little bit of rucking work. Cabea is there. Lucy Packer, bottom and wait. Still bottom and is that over? The Red Roses get their try. Bottom and who has carried and threatened all day finally gets the first points on the board. Yeah, it was England like we know them so well. You know, Hannah Bottomen is carried very, very well in this last half an hour. She's been involved in a lot, a lot of England's good play. Comes from the scrum. Emily Scarry in that breakdown. You would have thought she'd be down the wide channels, but it's just the basics done well, isn't it? Uh, Hannah Bottomen there, nice low. Italy make their first ta tackle, but nobody stops that ball. And when she's that close, she's allowed to reach and finish. Hannah Bottom made a big move from. Uh... Saracens to Bristol in the PWR at the end of last season. Here's her old Saracens teammate, Zoe Harrison. Well, no flags going up for that one. So it's just a five point game, but it's taken over half an hour for the Red Roses to get something on the board. But it was all came down to the strong carrying of that woman. Yeah, good carrying, good basic play. It, Italy, we know, are good defenders, but if you keep getting them through multiple phase, forcing them to defend, cracks will open, and I think that's what Hannah Bottomman's done very well there. She's just seen a bit of light, she's driven her legs, she's stayed strong, she's finished. Still only 24 years old, Hannah Bottomman. I feel she's got a, a lot of caps ahead of her. She's already managed to rack up 43. Lots of pressure coming in, though. Mackenzie Carson waiting on the bench. Who, she made a move to Gloucester Heartbreak. The ball comes back for England, cleared on the near side. They have no interest at all in the cameras turning right at all. <laughs> no, not at all, was it? It was go one place only. Tarani again appealing. Whatever they're going to do, unless they're going to shuffle forward, she's got a, a very long throw coming. And once again, it gives England the chance just to go up there, the hand in from Aldcroft. Cabea. He refuses to be tackled, keeps breaking out. Great dodge there by the referee. That's a huge kick, really nicely done by the Roses to pin Italy back. They're really forcing those back three to turn and get the ball. Dinka, Stefan, Federighi, only a couple of players going in to contest there by the Red Roses, but it's really slowing down any kind of Italian attack. Stefan with the chase on the near side by Dinka, oh, now I don't know if they'll look at that one. Both players were looking at the ball. They're OK as Italy push towards the far side. Muzzo goes on a run. Support there by Ostuni Manuzzi. Italy attacking at the right end of the field. Medea. Huge tackle going in by Cabea as the ball is knocked on. And Sadia Cabea. Wonderful vision by the Loughborough Lightning flanker to completely cancel out that Italian attack. 
No. Yeah, it's... Mm. Yeah, for me, she had one feet on, I think on the that's field. potentially something they maybe Sleep look at there. Just Zoe okay. Harrison is, is yeah. in the air and there's contact. Not necessarily she's just looking at the yeah. ball, but it'll be interesting okay. now to see whether they go back and review that. Mari? Chemo, correct me. It's in the air, so she's Piqué only. Yeah. Sofia? Okay, so Dinka, although she was looking at the ball, she has the responsibility to look after Zoe Harrison and make sure that she lands well. And so it's a penalty to England. As the DJ starts up once again. Got your glow sticks ready to go there, Katie Daly McLean? It's not really my kind of music, if I'm honest, Sarah. <laughs> I don't know, maybe we'll give you a few glasses or something and we can convert you. We'll see. <laughs> Show my age. And Prosecco is it's all about Italy today. So that was the moment. It's a good decision, though, from Zoe Harrison. As soon as you get in the air, you're giving yourself an op opportunity where the other player has to protect you, and it technically should make the catch a little bit easier. Scarrett then coming in to take the ball. Couldn't be more central in the middle of the field if the Red Rose is tried. A little bit of a roll there on the floor. Referee's happy. Marley Packer muscling on. Harrison, kill done, nice there to Roland. Oh, lovely dummy by Roland, who's still going. Helena Roland, who's going to stop her? There's an Italian player lying on the wrong side there. Referee's playing on, Atkin Davis. England hunting a second try in Italy. Popped off to Cabea. Not quite. She's done really well not to touch that down on the wrong side. Ward. Abby Ward is over. <laughs> try given. Abby Ward gets her try, having been denied on the first occasion. And England double their score. Yeah, again, it was just good forward carries. Very dominant, winning the space in behind. You watch, it's just, we're just going to go back to Abby Ward's finish again, really, really low. You think this just a very, very good job of using that momentum to roll and just fight, not dying. She could risk getting caught on your back there when you run into that many defenders. But the carry before that, Sarja Capay did a really, really good job again of not being held up. Because remember now, if she goes over that line and an Italian player is underneath her, that becomes an Italian ball. So gets the ball back, recycles it, and it's a, it's a really nice moment for Abby Ward. Some strong involvements from Sadia Kaber in those last few phases of play. Oh, Harrison, she's getting frustrated there. Really strong goal kicker with her club at Saracens, but so far not to be in Italy. Yeah, she'll be really, really frustrated. You just see Abby, Bo Abby Ward rolling over there, nice, real strong. Kavina trying to get underneath that ball, but yeah, when we go back to Zoe Harrison, she's a very, very competent goal kicker, so those kicks that are ones that she, in her range, are given for her, and she will be very frustrated. Well, we know that uh, little Hallie has been into the Red Roses camp, the daughter of Abby Ward, as, of course, Oliver, Marley Packer's son, who you will have seen in the build-up to this match. You can see more of that, of course, on the BBC Sport website. Creating quite the family feel around the Red Roses. Ward goes down again. Scarrett. She did that one on quite a tight angle. Read nicely in the end by Ostuno Manuzzi. Also plays her rugby at Val Sugana. Here comes Stefan with the distribution. Again, it's just quite slow here from Italy. They've got the extra woman on the field, but of the two sides, they appear to be the ones who are tiring as Rogoni then knocks on the ball as she tries to go through. Stock on advantage. Roland back to Scarrett, who's put the high one up. She indicates for Kildan to chase that. Mutsu. Well, it's Cavini who goes in and takes it again, but it's stolen ball. 
Here come the Red Roses. They've got a little bit of momentum, nicely taken by Breach. The one that finally connects, of course, it's the forward pass. It's a great speed of pass, though, from Zoe Harrison. Yes, it was forward, but the speed of her hand catch and to get that ball whipped across the front to, to Jess Breach was, was really, really nice to watch. And we haven't really seen a lot of that from England today. Well, this was the moment where the ball was stolen by Kelsey Clifford there. And lovely pass from Saracen to Saracen, but just a touch forward. Yeah, great work by Kelsey Clifford. You know, she kept her feet moving over that ball, even though the contact had changed. And it's just really smart. I thought England's breakdown play has been very, very good in this first half. Probably one of the most consistent parts of their game. You know, of course, Italy, a lot of problems. They've got through the ball. They haven't just made the tackle and, and stood off. They've caused, made Italy work for every breakdown. So good to see. And now they just need to be a bit more accurate with ball in hand. We did just see there a shot there of the uh, Italian players who aren't involved today in the stand. One, of course, is Elisa Giordano, who is the regular captain uh, for Italy. She's picked up a bit of a calf problem, and you do feel they could do with that kind of experience on the field today. Yeah, especially their forwards, you know. I, I think Italy have, have had an, a really, really bright first 30, 40 minutes of this game, but people like her who understand the game have had a lot of experience against England will know not to get complacent. And I think the second half, that's when you're going to need your leaders to stand up and to make sure you do you have another 40 just like this one. OK, the referees have been told to keep an eye out for this one. That was Lark Atkin Davis being told off for not having the break foot out. It basically gives an advantage to one side uh, when it comes to pushing. And it's also all about security and making sure that that scrum is stable as well. Yeah, it's... <laughs> It's hard, isn't it? Because there's been a, there's been a lot of talk about the laws and, and the variations. But from from Lark, it's a simple one. It's an easy one. Interesting though that Italy have then gone from another scrum. Given yes, that England are down a player, but somewhere where they haven't had a lot of dominance today. So when it comes to break foot, if you just look at the hookers who are in the middle there of that scrum, they need to have one foot outstretched in front of them. You can see they haven't even had a chance there to get that out at all. It just adds to the stability, and it's also the foot that they can actually hook back with. The problem is, though, isn't it? Hookers want, don't want to be moving their feet, so they want to be in a position that's strong. As soon as, obviously, they lift a foot, that changes the weight, the stability of front rows. And like you say, it was brought in for a, a safety issue, but sometimes it's front rows, if they've got, depending on the coaches, depending on how the scrum wants to function, is how they use it. Crouch! OK, eventually Italy do get the ball away. Huge thump of the ball down the field by Medea, gathered by Kildun. Stop! And England really using their kicking prowess at the moment. The clock is well into the red now, so that whatever happens next will be the end of the half. Oh, big tackle right over the top there. This time driving forward is Federighi, the Toulouse yes. second row. Stefan has seen enough, they get the ball off the field of play. And it's all been about the Red Roses when it comes to the points, when it comes to the talking points, reduced to 14, of course, with Sarah Beckett, who will play no farther part in this fixture. But still, it's the Red Roses who hold on. Half time, it's Italy nil, England 10. Getting used to new systems, new coach. Yeah, look, it's been a bit disjointed. <laughs> I, I'd say it's not a been, bit. Their, <laughs> just a, just a bit. It's not a been bit. their best 40 at all. I mean, as you've already touched on, some new players uh, and some old players have come back in. Um, you know, Emily Scarrett back in at 12. Uh, Zoe Harrison come back from injury. Abby Ward come back from obviously uh, giving birth. So we would expect it to be a little bit rocky, a little bit bumpy. But at the same time, you know, England are a very clinical side and they They've made a few errors. There's been, I think, 13 hand errors in total. So England won't be pleased with that, even though they're up on the scoreboard. Yeah, Sarah, we're used to seeing England sort of cut loose and, 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 and score tries and win well, you know, to dominate teams. But, you know, Italy, fair play to them. They've been 
kind of really good at the breakdown. Is that just frustrated England? Yeah, definitely. Italy, um, we knew going into this game, have a really good breakdown. Um, they're kind of one of the top teams in to getting turnovers. So England knew this was going to be a threat, and England, Italy, sorry, have really gone out and put that performance in today. They're really messing up um, England's quick ball, and that's going to frustrate England because that's the game plan they want to play. They want to play on the front foot. They want to play quickly, and Italy are just not allowing them to do that. Yeah, I think that's maybe why Sarah Beckett fell into a trap because she got the red card for a crocodile role, which World Rugby have announced in the last week or so that that is an area of the game. So Italy, the venue for this, this match in the Women's Six Nations, and we can go back to Palmer and hear from Elna. Red Roses attack coach Lou Meadows, just the red card there in that first half, but two tries at the end of it. What's the chat at halftime? We've just got to control our soft air account. That's what's punishing us at the moment. Otherwise, our shape's working really well. Um, the players are noticing the opportunities available to them. So I think once we get a hold of the possession and our soft air is reduced, we'll be able to maximise and capitalise on the ball. Talk to me about these conditions. 20 degrees Celsius, beaming sunshine. Is this the warmest test so far in the Mitchell era? Yeah, I think so. Like Obviously, when we were at WXV, it was warm, but we played in the evenings. It's a very different type of heat, whereas this is quite dry. And obviously, the sun's quite high for those high balls, so it's definitely the warmest. And the girls are feeling it, but we're extremely fit. We physically prepped really, really well, so it's not a problem. Now, the talk of width and the whole obsession with getting that ball out to the back line has been something that we've been going on about for weeks now. And yet, two forward tries so far? Mm -hmm. Yeah, again, it's a soft air account. So we're actually getting the ball to the width really, really well. We're getting into those edge breakdowns and then it's that next phase that's killing us. So our game plan is working. We've got the ability to play with our kick run pass and we've just got to maximise that by keeping the possession and looking after that ball, especially at the breakdown. I think that's where Italy are targeting us and they're getting some really good returns. So we've got to look after that. We've got to be even more fierce when we carry and really work hard on the floor when we get there. Thank you. Good luck. No worries. Thank you very much. Teams emerging in Palm. It was nice, wasn't it? Sarah, to see Abby Ward actually get on the team sheet because she's not long back from, from having a baby. You said to me she's had to work really hard to get back to this level. Yeah, some of the sessions she was doing um, at Bristol looked absolutely awful. I definitely, <laughs> I couldn't have done it um, and I was fully fit. So, yeah, she's back, I think, seven months since um, having a little Hallie, who's the most a gorgeous baby I've ever seen. Um, so, yeah, really impressed with her today. She's really come up the blocks firing. Yeah, well, Abby Ward on the team sheet. Maybe she'll do it again in the second half. We shall see. England leading in Palmer by 10 points to nil. Let's go back to our commentary team of Katie Daly McLean okay. and Sarah Orchard. Yeah. Thanks, Sonia. Well, we're about to get back underway then for the second half. Italy still with the extra woman on the field as the Red Roses play with 14, but England with that all important 10 point lead. Worth us mentioning very early on here that this is England's worst half against Italy since 2007 at least. So they won't be used to being in this kind of position. They're still in a position of strength, though, as the ball comes back to Rigoni, who bats that rather well to make sure it doesn't get knocked on as it comes out of play on the near side. Now, I'm just going to take this opportunity, Katie Daly-McLean. Uh, you did just want to say something quickly about Gary Street, who we saw there at halftime. You've got something in the auction as well, if they want to go kicking with you. <laughs> yeah, if anybody would like to uh, come for a kicking session, then it's, it's in the auction. You know, Gary Street is, is an amazing, an amazing guy. His wife, Helen, is even more amazing, and, and what they're going through is, is pretty awful. So anything that anybody can spare, there's lots of amazing things in the auction, so have a look and get involved. Right then, Not the ball there from Atkin Davis, who is going to be really frustrated by the end of this fixture. There's been a number of those now for England, so they're going to reset this one. Italy, quite sensibly, you'd have to argue after what we've seen so far at the scrum, have decided Inside. that they're going to go for a line-out. They would have had the option of the scrum not to be.
So short up the front, really nice there. Stefan now with a little bit of footwork. Italy desperately trying to get themselves out from that end of the field. Use it! Well, we're looking for a big clearance here from the Azur. Waiting underneath quite happily is Dow. Quick to distribute to kill Dunn as the shadows just start spilling across the field in Palmer. Crossfield kick coming in from Harrison. Now she was... Uh, Direct. Oh, again, just some of these crossfield so kicks from England, they're just not quite connecting the way they want them to. And she was over the halfway as well, so it wouldn't have been a 50-22, even if it hadn't gone straight out of play. Yeah, I think the space for me is the, the right space that they're trying to identify. You know, they want to squeeze Italy back in their 22. They want to be in Italy's half. It's just that execution at the minute. And it, we, talk, we saw Lou Meadows talk about it at half time. They just want England to be a bit more accurate, which means their decision makers have to be better with the ball. Scorbini. The Romagnac woman driving over the halfway line. Plenty of these Italian women now applying their trade in France and also in England Play as the ball gets slightly. turned over by the Roses, Aldcroft. And considering she's been out for the majority of the season is uh, picking up like she hasn't missed a beat. Lostuni Minuzzi made her debut back in 2020. One of the more regular names now on the Italian team sheets with uh, Rigoni with absolutely no space on this near side. Somehow, Italy keep that in. They decide to use a little bit of ballast this time through Maris. Really appears to be the first choice loose head now for the Italians, but going into that contact, holding on the floor, and England easily get the ball back. Be interesting what England do here. You know, line out isn't functioning as they would have hoped. Um, Zoe Harrison quite happy though to put England in the corner. It's a good tackle there, isn't it? Marley Packer, one of the best in the business at this. Interesting that left hand though again was holding her weight. Referee was on the other side, so hasn't seen it. And England get the turnover and then the penalty. Well, England will be pleased with that penalty count. Italy will be frustrated. Five metres out, goes high, really nice take in the air there by Ward, and this is moving nicely. Surely the Red Roses know where that try line is, it goes, it's over. No, first. England get a quick early try then in the second half, Atkin Davis just hanging out there, and she touches down over the line to extend the Roses' lead. Uh, it's well worked by England. It, it hasn't functioned like they would have hoped today. You know, very good line out over here, both Abby Ward and Lark Akin Davies. But went simple, much quicker, up and down on the ground. And then once they got that drive on, it was so, so d Italy. Italy have taken the approach to try and sack it. Sarah Tanesi there has gone up. Uh, and once you go up and you go to compete, it makes trying to stop them all so, so difficult because people are out of position. Uh, it's a good try by England and what they needed in the start of this first half. Well, when that score was at 10-0 to England, it was worth mentioning that the last time they were actually in that position was 17 months ago at the World Cup against France. So they're trying to rectify the scoreboard as quickly as they can as uh, Harrison just sends one across the face of goal there. I mean, Katie Daly-McLean, you've been a kicker as we just watched that rolling ball trundle over one more time. Um, What's it like when you've missed a few in succession? How does your mentality hold in there? Yeah, it's tough. It, it is, especially because the first two are very, very, I wouldn't say easy, but kicks that we would assume Zoe Harrison would get. That one was slightly harder. She's connecting well with the ball, just getting a line. And, you know, she hasn't played as much club rugby as she would have liked, had a, a nasty yeah. couple of niggles. The, the thing that used to get me when I was playing was the other competent kickers yeah. you have on your side. You know, Helena Rowlands is in there, Emily Scarrett. And that was the one that used to get, should I hand it over? Should I keep it? Is somebody going to tell me? So yeah. it'll be interesting whether the girls have had a chat and whether Zoe's saying, look, I'm happy, just need to kind of find my line in this game. Also, whether you hand it over before or after, you see it's right in front of the post, I assume. Exactly. All right, then. Italy. 
it's so slow for them. It's really hard for them just to put something together here. Scorbini. Medea, who's got that lovely pass, Rigoni. Oh, this is nice from Italy. Oh, they managed to connect on Muzzo on this far side. Stefan looks up. There was Cavani. Comes down once again. Scorbini, we can see on the pitch at the moment, is Stefan in. Spun out. Of course, Stefan in onto the field. After Sillery has gone off, after her knee just gave her that little bit too much of trouble in the first half, goes back to Ostuni Manuzzi. All of a sudden, Italy looking a bit lively. That's a nice kick through. Big pressure coming down now on Harrison, who's isolated. And Flair's just come in to do a clean-up job. And Packer goes on. Okay, Stop. Roland, she's the one who's trusted with the clearance, hasn't found touch, has found Rigoni. Big tackle coming in there by Abby Dow. Abby Dow actually scored four tries against Italy in this fixture last year. Stefan once again feeding the ball to the forwards. A nice little idea there by Stefan, but I don't know if any of her teammates knew about it. Kill Dunn thinks she can see a bit of space. Packer with the drive. Distribution coming in. Hannah Bottoman, who has certainly put in a shift in that number one shirt. Interesting to see when both sides start deploying the benches. Medea. Stop, Blue! Kill Dunn comes once again. The Quinns woman started out in rugby league, came over to Union as then she finds Cabea. Back inside now to Scarrett. Just too many bodies board. hanging around there. That can Wallace! All been in play for quite a while now for both sides. No hands, what? No hands. Warnings going in there for England to keep those hands out. Use it. Well, Stefan's nickname in the Italian squad is Energy, and you feel that is a little bit what the Italians need because it's all about kill done with the energy now. She's still going. Wonderful work. Look at those long legs driving. And it is kill done who gets the bonus point try for England. 14 women, no problem. That was absolutely lovely by Ellie Kildun. You knew at some point this game was going to open up. Stefan keep kicking for Italy, but like you touched on, Zara, I don't think the rest of her team were connected, and this lady does not need an invitation into free space. Great take, and then it's that lateral step, gets her down and around, and once she's running, running free, she beats players for fun, and it's just the importance of if you're going to kick a ball, you have to have a very good chase because the quality of Ellie Kildun will pick you you off. Well, Ellie Kildun, she's beaten the most defenders in the PWR this season, 76 in total. So don't pretend that the Italians so wouldn't have been prepared uh, for that. She has been I doing this all cutting. season. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Sorry. Well, Zoe Harrison wasn't going to give away the ball for this kick, was she? <laughs> Helena Rowland is standing there. I wonder whether it was a, a conversation or whether it was one she was just asking her to hold the ball just in case. Well, you can see changes there for England, which means that we might have just missed the conversion or the kick at goal. I'm sure you would have liked to have seen Harrison's kick there. So confirmed there that the ball has gone over from England. Kill done there. 
with the bonus point try. Right then, changes for England, changes in the front row. We saw so many of those forwards had put in the hard work, and now we get to see Connie Powell, Mackenzie Carson, Maud Muir all into the fray. It was Zoe Harrison who kicked that one over for England's 22-point lead. What a run here, coming down from Dow. Oh, she does so well not to go into touch. This woman is all class. Packer then manages to find Roland. Big pass out wide. The Red Roses, they're just forcing it just too much there. Their tails are up. And they'll make it's their way move. back. You can just feel that real energy just coming in now from the Red Roses. Yeah, and I think it's going to be tough for Italy. You know, 52 minutes in, they've made more tackles. They've had to. They've had such a good shot at this England side, you know, especially in that first 40. But I think this is where we expect England's class to kind of, and their strength and depth to really run away with this game. Abby Dow then with that little break down the side. So physical, so hard to bring down when she gets her pace and gets running. Set! Well, England's still packing down there with just seven, but making a good job of it in the process as the crossfield kick comes in. It's terribly executed there by Medea. She knew that she needed that one to connect. And it is just a shame when it comes to kicking with Italy because they've got so many options. They're all good footballers, but it just hasn't worked for them this afternoon. Just a bit of fatigue there as well, isn't it? She set off really quickly, looked like she was in two minds whether she was going to pass or kick, and then was not a great connection. Well, you can see there hanging out in the midfield onto the field. You can see it's HSN now. It's the breakaway to Roland. Roland goes down. Five tries now for the Red Roses. And Italy have the extra woman on the field, and they still don't have any answers. This is where your errors really, really cost you, cost you. And for Italy here, you see England first phase, we've seen them, Holly Aitchison onto the pitch. Bit of a no-look pass, and Helena Rowland, like Ellie Kildun, is so, so good. Ball in hand, ball in two hands, beating defender, head up. She's so balanced there. And once she's got such a great step and acceleration, Zoe Harrison on her shoulder, but Helena Rowland is definitely not going to use her that close to the line. You can see that. Holly Aitchison now onto the field, the Bristol woman. And here comes another attempt then by Zoe Harrison. And all of a sudden, she's found her kicking boots. And sometimes that's all it takes, you know, one nice, simple kick in front of the post, builds a bit of confidence, but for me, this is lovely by Holly Aitchison. Takes it to the line, can makes Italy commit, and it's the no-look. She knows where Helena Rowlands is going to be on her shoulder. England will have multiple options out the back, and it's just making Italy make decisions under fatigue. And this is where I think we will see England pull away. Well, for all that effort, it took England half an hour in that first half to get any points on the board. In this second, in just 14 minutes, well, they've managed to score three tries. Whatever the halftime team talk was, it certainly worked if you are an England fan. Italy will be so frustrated right now. I think they will be, but you've got to remember where this Italian side is as well. You know, England are full-time, they've been full-time for a long time. Italy's contracts aren't the same, these girls aren't having the same opportunity. And I still think we do have to hold this in context when we're looking at these teams head-to-heads. OK, so change also at scrum half now for England. Natasha Hunt into the fray. The tri-assist queen at the moment right now in the PWR. Maud Muir. Slowing down any kind of Italian go forward. Stefan can see space behind the Red Roses. The chase is on. Oh, that's a nice touch finder. If they'd have caught it, it would have been better. <laughs> Took a while to actually bounce out, though. It's a great weight of kick, isn't it? Really good identification. Lovely ball shape as well, so she knows she's going to get that kick and that roll. Oh, the ball just sat up, didn't it, over her head. Anything else, and I think Italy could have been in then. England need to get themselves out from where they are. Long pass Stop. back then from Hunt. Stop. 
Well, the flag is up, and England get themselves uh, back down the other end of the field as quickly as they can. That was a great clearing kick by Zoe Harrison. On the line, 50 metres there. Really, really confident. Is definitely started to grow into this game a little bit more. Some of her touches from Zoe Harrison have been very, very good. And England are starting to benefit from them. Well, Tarani gets the ball in, comes down. Medea looking for those forward options hanging out in the bat line. is better from Italy but again it's the wrong color shirt who's waiting in the open field England can do that there's no offside line crossfield kick now from Harrison is it going to bounce up for down nope again nice idea as it goes out of play yeah <laughs> time is off Seven. and more changes then this Seven. time for Italy you can see coming onto the field is Pilani now remember Italy did actually go for the 6-2 split on the bench. They've got a few more forwards to bring on. Scorbini hasn't had too bad an afternoon, but she's probably taking a seat just because she's done so much work. We get to see Giordano Duca coming in. Now, she's got one of the highest tackle evasion rates from the 2023 Six Nations. She can be a very tricky customer. Right on the mark. She also was third on the most tackles made in 2023. So a great lady that you probably would like to bring off the bench at this moment to kind of freshen up that Italian pack. And a big pile of bodies, eventually the ball emerges out on the Italian side. Medea not looking to distribute, happy to take it into contact. First, a fan who's had to spend a lot of her career actually behind Sara Baratin of Italy, who's their most capped player. She finally retired in 2023. She did come back out once, but uh, Sophia Stefan now really trying to make a name for herself now. It's that big first choice and captaining Italy today as well. Great take on that far side. Italy get the ball. A lot of work going in there by Dinka, stolen eventually on the ground by England. They send it back. Ostuni Manuzzi is forced to turn. We knew that's what England really wanted to try and force Italy to do. Right over the top there nice. goes Aldcroft. Does well not to give away the penalty as the Italian forwards have a little bit of a shift to put in here. the ball goes then to Stevan in not a huge amount of clearance on that if anything just a, a nice uh, nice little opportunity there for England to set something up yeah it's tough isn't it you know England are keep rolling the bench make an impact thought Mohan has, has come on and speeded things up at least he pack has started very well for England moved the ball well but it's going to be hard now for Italy just to keep li living with this pace. You know, they're loading their bench, 6-2 split. Hopefully that'll help them as well. We get to see Goroli onto the field. Stecker, Branzotto as well. Six and seven. Still a good 20 minutes to go. And this is the last thing that England need with that. Well, that Italy need with Alex Matthews coming on. But a big moment, of course, for Mari Fernati. The extra flanker on debut is coming onto the field, but on her 100th cap, Marley Packer salutes the crowd and goes and takes a well-earned rest on the bench. This music is very appropriate for Marley. Marley Packer, also known as Party Packer. Um, you know, she played well today. She's, she's been outstanding, 100 caps, and it, it's great to see her enjoying this moment. Marley Packer, 100, not out. No doubt the celebrations will continue into Ashton Gate next week where England will be playing Wales and she's given a standing ovation by her teammates as well. Now there's still a little bit of treatment to a player going on down on the floor for the time being. Now we understand there'll be a little bit of chopping and changing going on here for England and it'll be even more chopping and changing considering that Sarah Beckett uh, has been red carded as well. So we understand Sadia Kabea, she'll move to seven.
Okay, so there's still a little bit of treatment going on here down on the floor. So just a, a reminder there of what I was talking about still to come in the women's Six Nations. Of course, we've got Scotland against France. That one's a two o'clock kickoff on the iFlare. England, Wales, BBC Two, 4.25, our coverage starts. That one, of course, at Ashton Gate. And then we finish off the weekend on Sunday, Ireland against Italy. That one also on the iPlayer coverage getting underway at 2.45. Right then, here come England flying away. They've already got five tries. Could they get more? Down on the field goes Dow. Not on the score sheet yet today. Sometimes you just have a feeling about a player. So they have a little bit more in them. Popped off ball there from Kill Dunn. Big hits coming in there by the fresh legs coming in from the bench. Matthews. More footwork this time by Maud Muir, playing at tight head. She has played at loose in the past, but she is now being asked to concentrate just on the tight head position. Kill done. Push towards the far side. Breach is waiting. Does well to straighten. Hunt. Do you just feel there's just that little bit quicker play coming at the moment by the Red Roses? Hunt again. Aitchison, who stood so flat. Oh, really nice there by Carson. Carson over. Mackenzie Carson, the Gloucester Hartbury prop, goes over for her second England try. And the scoreline is certainly heavily weighted now in the Red Roses' direction. Just England going through their phase to see some lovely little touches. But for me, it was all about the speed of breakdown. England was so clinical. Once the ball was on the floor, their clearers had gone through and the ball was playable. In. Mackenzie Carson there, nice line, she's out in those channels, great ball from Holly Aitchison and an easy try, but speed of ball. If England play quick, so, so hard for Italy to get round the corner to get your defence into shape and to go put pressure on teams. Well, Harrison's now three in the row with the boot. And uh, Katie Daly-McLean, how much of an influence, as we see Meg Jones coming onto the field as well now, how much of an influence has the bench been in this second half? It, it was always going to be, you know, as we watch this try again, Holly Aitchison again, for, you've got so many first receivers, Zoe Harrison in there, Holly Aitchison, Helena Rowland, all playing fly half, just allows England to be so quick because you're not waiting for anybody to get into position. I thought Mackenzie Carson's come on and carried well, Maud Muir's gone well, Alex Matthews, I mean... When you're Italy and you're, you know, you're fighting to stay into the game and you see those girls who are such good ball-in-hand players, it's hard. Right, Rigoni then sends the ball down the field. Knock on advantage. Here comes a chance for the Italians. This is better. Can Italy build something here? Rigoni with the pass out wide. Oh, it's really taken by Muzzo. It's a one-on-one -on -one with Kildan, who deals with her brilliantly. Thou shall not pass. Great bit of defence from Ellie Kildun, but it's hard, isn't it? When you're a winger, you've got a one-on-one. -on -one. You've got to get away from that touchline. And for me, she made it easier for Ellie Kildun in that instance. You know, step off that left foot, drive into... It's a great pass here, but she's got to drive into the space. But Ellie Kildun's really held her feet there, you know. She hasn't given her an opportunity, and it's a great, great tackle there. Really, really physical. Great cover back defence from your full-back. Big throw coming in there by Connie Powell. Quinn's hooker. Muir with the truck up. Hunt gets it back. Roland on the near side with the clearance. And the kicking options again continue in that England back line despite the changes. Bringing on the lights of Aitchison and Jones just adds to the, the gems they already had. It does, and what's fascinating about this back line, it, I touched on it previously, is the amount of first receivers you've got in your midfield. So you've got tens at tens, but you've got girls that are playing at their club at fly half. And it, like I said, it just allows you to speed your play up because you've constantly got somebody organising what's going on without the need of fly halves running round into position. 
Knock on advantage. Okay, advantage there Knock for advantage. England. Roland then Huntington. pushing the ball out. Here's Jones on the ball for the first time. She's running it straight up into Italy's faces. They almost left her there too long. Ball's been knocked on. Knock on. No. Okay, right, let's head to pitch side. Elma, who have yeah. you got with you? Knock on. Yeah. I've got coach John Mitchell. Uh, did you have some supercharged jelly beans at halftime ready for the girls? Because this second half has just gotten started in a much better way. Yeah, we um, just let off the pressure in the in the first half. We were actually building some nice pressure just before half time. Um, always knew that this game was going to be a bit sticky, so I'm really proud of the way the girls have actually worked their way through it. And uh, now we're starting to get some really good cohesion and um, yeah, playing at the right end of the field. Yeah, it helps to hold on to the ball as well. Talk us through uh, the sending on of Maddie Fanati for her first cap. A really special young player you guys have identified. Yeah, Maddie's uh, an extremely good back rower, very athletic, uh, very fast, uh, very young as well. Um, brought up in Leeds, um, obviously, and uh, yes, uh, has been totally committed in terms of wanting to, um, yeah, to play for a, for a country. And um, yeah, the girls have uh, embraced her really well, and she's fitted in really well as well. Thanks, Mitch. Thank you. There you go. I'm speaking to the Red Roses head coach John Mitchell there as Italy just managed to string together some beautiful phases, but it all comes to an end in the midfield as the ball just tumbles forward there. And yeah, we will wait to find out what was actually said at halftime to the Red Roses. You come out like a train in this second half, but look at that ruck speed. Katie Daly McLean, one to three seconds, 73% England. That is a fly half stream, you know, you want to play quick ball. What that also allows you to do is to get flatter to the line because the likelihood is the defensive side on set. They're folded in round the corner. They're trying to get into position. They probably haven't got time to get off the line. And that's why we're seeing England having so much speed. The interesting part for Italy now is what do you do about it? How do you stop that being one to three seconds? You have either have to make more dominant tackles or you have to make the breakdown harder, a bit more messy. I think it's a tough ask for the next 15 minutes, given how much work and effort these girls have already put into this, this game. Well, Hunt manages to get it out. She certainly had a bit of zip about her play, as has Kill done. Ricciu has been a hanging out there on that left wing. She's put in a huge amount of effort, but she has been closed out by Italy on that far side wing frequently. She has, and again, we just talked about it in Italy, isn't it? For me, I think it's great that you've seen wingers go one-on-one, -on -one, but the likelihood is when you're in the five-meter channel or you've got three meters of space, to try and beat your alternative winger is hard going. It's probably the one where you just step off your left foot, you drive back in, you win the breakdown and you recycle. And England have been better once they've gone through their phases. Advantage here for the Red Roses. That's a great take there by Roland, who managed to get it to Jones. Now we get to see Kill Dunn try score. Laura spun around there. A little bit of support and ballast comes in by Feyanati. Maybe Feyanati, who's, uh, you might be thinking, oh, I remember that surname. Yep, yeah, Zach Feyanati, the, uh, the dad who played at Bath and for Samoa. Hunt. Aldcroft. Gloucester Hartbury to Gloucester Hartbury, who of course are resplendent at the moment at the top of the English league. 13 from 13 wins. As, uh, Roland thinks she can see a little bit of space out there. Decide to attack back towards the middle of the field. And, oh, she thinks she can see a little bit of space. No scrum half now. Roland spins it out wide. Feyenoord is there. Nice pass back inside. Hunt back again. Big push. Is that going to be touchdown? No. Held up over the line. Nice idea by England then. But not quite the right body position. Lovely little off old from the touchline, isn't it? Keeps the ball alive, like we've been saying. And here, great defence by Italy. Powell, you think, is over, but she's managed to get herself in between the ball and the ground. In Italy will get an opportunity to, to, rela to relax and get rid of the ball, but that stat is fascinating. 123 tackles made, in comparison to England's 87, and went 27 tackles missed. And that, for me, is probably the difference in the scoreline in the game.
And it says a huge amount as well. If you think about how long Italy have had the extra women on the field as well, how frightening the scoreline might actually have been had England played the yeah. majority of this fixture so actually check, check. with 15. Okay, same. That will be the concern right now for Italian rugby. There's a not a concern, of course, for Marley Packer or John Mitchell, who are on the right side of this scoreline. But uh, for Italian rugby, it was only about 12 days ago. Yeah, it's not the uh, Italian so Federation the actually confirmed yes, the Italian players' so contracts. They actually expired back in January, so ah. it's been a long wait for a lot of these yeah. women, and you just have to ask yourselves how so much that will actually help yeah. them in their build-up to a Six Nations when they're yeah. worrying about other things rather than their rugby. Yeah, 100%. So and I think it just makes it hard, isn't it? If you're known, the, the girls you're playing wise. against are full-time, they've got a lot more resource, a lot more investment, and you're putting your body on the line to do that, but you're just not getting the same backing. It, it is tough. I think what we're seeing is now is more unions are doing it, and eventually everybody should hopefully be on a, a level playing field. OK, so our referee, Aurelie Gorazalu, is actually going to go and look at some foul play on the big screen. It's been called in by her television match official. Now, it's the entry of Helena Rowland here. You can see there Emanuela Stecker of Villorba. She's the one down on the ground. They're going to be looking to see if Rowland is staying on her feet and also if she's trying to wrap or if she's leading with a shoulder. We can see how low both players are. It's a direct contact shoulder to the head. But... Uh, well, I think Helena Rowland could be looking at a yellow card here, but highly likely this one will also go towards yeah. a bunker review. Yeah, they're, they're looking at head shoulder to head contact on in this instance. Helena's done a great okay, job of trying to dip behind. But from that angle, it looks like her right contact, shoulder makes contact with the head. the head. Yes. Let's listen in. Yes, Orly, there is contact to the back of the head of the player on the ground. Yes, it's a dangerous play note because it's a vulnerable player on the field. So it's a foul play. Correct. So for me, it's yellow card, Swiss hold and review. Agree with that. OK, so you heard quite clearly there by Aurelie Gorazilu. Yes, but it's, uh, she's vulnerable. So your player is direct contact shoulder to the head. It's, uh, it's yellow and with you. Well, discipline is going to be a big concern here for England into this Six Nations. As Helena Rowland goes and takes a very nervous sit down. Already Sarah Beckett with a red card today. The possibility of another, but it will be the uh, bunker referee that decides her outcome. England now playing with 13 women on the field. They've done pretty well with 14. They've managed to go 36 nil up. But if ever there was an opportunity for Italy, surely it's this moment now. Yeah, and especially the position that Helena's in, you know, no yeah. disrespect to Sarah Beckett, <laughs> but she's in a pack, there's other players around her. Helena Rowland in that 13 channel makes England's defensive line a little bit shorter, so tighter in, and we know Italy want to throw this ball around, they want to go to the wide channel, so it'll be interesting how England rearrange themselves to the bring Ellie Kildun into the front line and leave their two wingers in, in the backfield. Well, quite a fortunate moment for England to actually gather themselves here, because when you're down to 13, okay. you need to get some messages on, actually talk about how they actually play at this moment. So uh, Connie Power just receiving a bit of treatment to check everything's OK. We saw that Zoe Aldcroft, she's actually captaining England right now. She has done that in the past. Other captains who are out there on the pitch who've helped at the Red Roses, the likes of Abby Ward and Emily Scarrett, I mean, Scarrett off the pitch right now, but um, they have actually been told to focus on their rugby at the moment because they've both had breaks from international rugby. And, uh, oh, Helena Rowland there, you can see they're desperately disappointed as she awaits to see what happens next. Yeah, she's such a, a, a talented player, but also somebody who is very, very responsible. And I think for moments like this, she will feel for her that she's let her side down. And, and I think that's one of the hardest things, isn't it, as a player, that nobody ever goes in with any, but any intent to hurt another player. But those moments when you feel like you've let your teammates down, it really does hurt. An opportunity then for Italy. 
They've got two extra women on the field. Spun out ball. Ranzotto. She manages to find some of that forward ballast as we see Stecker running onto the ball. Italy need to get out of their 22 as Groli there took on duties. Comes back now to Medea. Kill done is waiting. Just can't quite get that extra purchase on the ball. England always stood so well in the backfield to receive. Crystal Bears, Holly Aitchison. Still Red Roses ball. They're playing with 13, and it's still all about England as eventually they knock the ball onto the floor. And they'll restart with an Italian scrum. So if they play smart here, Italy, they could maybe set up the back backfield nicely. Yeah, I think especially because it's in the middle, you've got to make England defend both sides, and then it's about picking the space. England will have to commit one way or another. They'll probably use Natasha Hunt to give them a bit more width from their defensive Ready? line. But it'll be interesting to see how, how they use their backfield. And sometimes you have to load your front field and you give teams the backfield and you want them to kick it. And I would have thought in this instance, that's probably what England would like to do. Crouch! No, no, no. Well, England are chasing a triple Grand Slam in this Six Nations. They have done it before, and this will be the fourth time they're looking to achieve it. They've never won four Grand Slams in a row. But let's not get too far of ourselves. Mind! Set! And there's a big shove from a pack that's a woman down. Now that will be a concern. It's penalty advantage to England. That was the opportunity for Italy. But somehow it's still Red Rose's ball. Breach out on the far side. Jones with the distribution straight over the top to support her friend. This is nice. Still being put together. Ward still on the field, putting in the shift. Laid back really nicely there by Carson. They're looking for the big pass out wide. Kildan is waiting. They've only got 13 on the field and they still find space. Kildon goes over for a second. Where are the Italians? It's speed of ball, sorry. It's causing them so many problems. Because England, in this instance, they didn't let the ball die. They kept the offload. Abby Ward, I think, was in there. Before you get <clears throat> to this big pass here, the ball is just kept alive by England's forwards. They don't take the breakdown. And by doing so, they never let Italy get set. It's a great pass then, a lovely little finish from Ellie Kildun. But for me, that's made by these guys, England's forwards, who are working hard, they're carrying well, they're offloading, they're just ne never letting Italy get set. Ellie Kildun, 25 tries now in an England shirt. One of the many players out there, of course, Thanks. played in that disappointing World Cup final in New Zealand two years ago now. Next World Cup final will be played at Twickenham next year. Red Roses will be hoping to get to that final and having a different outcome. Holly Aitchison there with the conversion. A little bit of a miss kick. Yeah, interesting, because you've also got Meg Jones on there. Holly didn't look particularly happy there having to get to goal kick. Um, Meg Jones is a great goal kicker as well. So, yeah, probably not a best strike. It's just something that the girls will keep working on, working hard on. You Like we see, there's a lot in that squad who are very, very talented goal kickers. It's worth saying that Italy had the best place kicking record out of all the teams in the 2023 Six Nations, but then they only took 12 kicks at goal. Uh, for England, they took 44. So it's quite hard to actually compare statistics as the ball is knocked on by England in the midfield. Knock on. Well, Giovanni Ranieri is going to have quite the workout to do with his Italian outfit after this. I mean, England, they are the world number one side, but Italy are none too shabby with seventh. They had a very strong WXV2 campaign, ultimately pipped to the post by Scotland uh, by points difference, and I mean pipped to the post. Yeah. But they're not quite playing as the cohesive side as we know they can be. Yeah. And I, I think Italy have so many talented individuals. Oh, yeah, 
At the moment, it's probably their first 15 that are their, their, their front runners, their best side. And, and as we've seen, kind of as their bench has come on, they've just started to fall away from their shape. And I think for Italy, that's what's going to be the, really good for them as they get more time together, as they spend more time working on these bits, is, is how good they can become because of the talent they have on their side. Well, there's a lot going on down on the pitch at the moment. Ellie Kildun confirmed there as the player of the match, but also confirmed that Helena Rowland's yellow card will remain a yellow. So today gives a review to Bunker in the player. The yellow card will remain a yellow card. Yeah. Time is on. Well, that will be somewhat of a, a sigh of relief from England. So one red, one yellow. Helena Rowland, she will rejoin the field of play. But uh, only for about two minutes towards the end. Yeah, it's, it's good that stay the yellow, I think, and probably the right decision, you know. Like we say, dangerous, but actually the, the level of danger. But Ellie Kildun's been fantastic today, you know. 174 metres made, she's been so, so dangerous ball handed. She's been very good defensively as well. Branzotto, looking for options. Huge tackles going in from Abby Ward in particular, who's put in quite the shift on her return to the international scene. Both her and Allcroft playing a full 80. And Italy finally could start attacking down in that England 22. Remember, they've got two extra players out on the field, but it's gone forward. The crowd think that Dinka has gone through. They'll come back again. There's a couple of times that they Italy think that they've got something there. Now, we did say in the first half that so many of these games, the last five that the Red Roses have played against Italy, they have won by 50 plus points. We didn't think that was going to be the opportunity today, but that was before the second half. And there's just confirmation that Helena Rowland, that's staying a yellow. And um, will the Red Roses bring up the 50 is the question now. At least two scores away from it. It's leaves start to look brighter as well this last 10 minutes, you know. Fine margins, forward pass, yes, in that instance, but they're starting to exploit the space. They're trying to pick off this 13 women's England side. Set! Hunt. Aitchison. Nice take by Ostuni Manuzzi. It's a good few metres there. Branzotto. Nice there by Rigoni. The problem was she was the only one that knew it was coming. <laughs> Beatrice Rigoni. She has a box of tricks, but uh, Katie Daly McLean, you know her because uh, you work with her at sale and for all of her excitement, sometimes. Yeah. It's not the place. That's her trademark as well. That will come out at least once a game, if not twice. And the thing is, she is so, so talented. Great yes, athlete. It's probably just those moments when you need maybe a bit more consistency and a bit more accuracy. But if you take that away from uh, Beatrice, then probably you just end up with a normal player. And what she brings to the game is very different. It's very special. Crunch. She actually played a bit of fly half at WXV. Uh, where do you prefer her, 10 or 12? She prefers 12. She she doesn't enjoy being in that tension. But do you know what it is? You just want her close to the ball because she can make things happen. And like you say, she's got a great box of tricks. Meg Jones there standing in that first receiver position. The pass there for the Roses doesn't quite connect as Jess Brees pops it back there to player of the match, Kill Dunn. She's trying to get out of a Jess Breach's way there. The crowd don't like it. I think that Breach was blocking her. Grosolo happy. So flat there, that pass coming in there by Aitchison. Hunt, Aitchison again, cross-field kick coming in. That's a nice bit of field position. And once again, Italy pegged back. And they've got to clear themselves out of the 22. 
It's a really smart bit of fly half play for me. You know, you, she's getting ahead of, she's looking early. Yes, England have got ball, they're going forward, but just push, push Italy back. And it's a really well executed kick. I don't think you can underestimate how valuable that is when your team is maybe starting to lose a little bit of shape. You've been playing with 13 for a lot of the game just to put another team under pressure in their 22. Groli, former Italian sevens player, gets it in. Surely too much for Italy to do here with the clock against them. They just haven't found their way down into the England 22 at all in this fixture. Ball comes back, Medea. And she's given England a line out just outside of that Italian 22. Good exit, had to get Italy out. And that's all Italy can do, is keep sending England out there 22, keep defending. And for them, this will be a, a good scoreline. You know, like we say, they've taken some heavy defeats to the hands of England. So 41 points and how well they went in their first half. This is a real strong performance from Italy. England back up to 14 women. A minute and a half left to play in Parma after what could have been a hugely concerning fixture here for the Roses at half-time, but they are powering through, and they powered through this second half. Jones unable to hold that one. And likely one of the last things we're going to see here is a scrum. Oof, just a fingertip fumble, isn't it? Meg Jones is so flat to the line, and I've enjoyed seeing moments of that from England today. You know, their backs really engaging their defenders, making defenders make decisions in opening space. I think probably the biggest thing they will look back at this game will be their accuracy, ball in hand. Now, here's a stat for you, Katie Dolan. England likes Six Nations Sundays, OK? Their last four Six Nations Sundays matches, they have nilled their Cut. opponents, and I think that might just be about to be extended Nine. to a fifth. Here we go, Six. 30 seconds to go. Have Italy got one last throw of the dice? Will that scoreboard still read as nil? There goes Grasotto. Ten seconds left to play. Italy can't make a mistake. Clock nearly in the red. Back it comes down the Italian line, spun out, not taken clearly. Muzzo now has it, she tracks back inside. Plenty of red roses watching her fly by. Rosotto looks across, manages to find Guy, winning her 96th cap today. She plays in all of these Six Nations games. She'll manage to get up to 100. Well, Italy have worked their way towards the halfway line here. Have they got one last attempt here? English discipline is good. Medea right through the middle. Stecker is there. There's the breakaway. What a great steal there by Powell. Connie Powell. She's still going strong. She needs some help. Who's going to finish the job? Right over the top there by the Italians. An easy England penalty. Yes. Have wanted to take it quickly. Yellow, cynic collection. Oh, line. a yellow card as well, wait? just to oh, add yellow. insult to injury for Italy. Yeah. Great take there by Connie Powell. I think if she had kept going rather than looking, she was in. Uh, she slowed herself down by looking for support or maybe looking for an Italian. Well, it's Steven in who is uh, sent to the bin. Cynical play there, right in the red zone. And England are going to finish on a line-out. No tap and go there. You want to finish on a flourish here. Maybe they haven't got to that point in the uh, script yet of uh, tap and goes. Right, then, ball comes in, taken in the air by Ward. This is set up really nicely. Powell is there at the back. Will she get her try at the second nibble? Here it goes. Surely that's over, yes! Eight tries for the Red Roses, who have come to life in this second half in Parma. Yeah, they have, and it kind of finished how it started, didn't it, with a, a try from the line-out. 
it's England's safe place, isn't it? A line out at times hasn't functioned well, but here, ball was on the money, it was well formed. Connie Powell had an e much easier run in than that intercept two minutes earlier. Um, and for Italy, you know, I think they've, they've really stuck out the fight. It's been a hard, hard game for them. 6 2 split, you know, some of them forwards have come on and put on a shift, but well done, Connie Powell, and a good finish. Connie Powell moved from Gloucester Hartbury to Harlequins. She actually started out her rugby back at Sudbury Rugby Club, going over for her seventh England try. Aitchison with the final act of the match. <laughs> and that is good. And that is that. The triple Grand Slam is still on for the Red Roses. Took them a while to get going. But when they were going, they would not be stopped. What a day for Marley Packer. John Mitchell starts his first Six Nations with a big win. And Italy, they will be left just scratching their heads. Ali Kildan, the player of the match. Good shift. Full time then in Parma. Italy nil, England 48.